Hello and welcome to the very first Salmon Fest streaming for Bristol Bay, coming to you from somewhere on the Kenai Peninsula. My name is Dave Applin. I've been lucky enough to be one of the MCs at the Salmon Fest event for all 10 years it's been in existence. This year, we're excited to present to you some of the most amazing music and information about the causes we care about, the cause we care about, uh, Bristol Bay. And my name's Satchel Pandolfino. I'm the community organizer for Cook and Lit Keeper in Homer. And at Salmon Fest, our role is to really saturate the festival in salmon. Salmon art, salmon fun, love, basically any opportunity to make, elevate our salmon cu culture in Alaska. So hopefully you as the audience leave feeling more empowered to uh, protect the salmon and the salmon culture we love here. So, where, are we, where are we speaking from today? Today we're speaking from Homer, Alaska. It's the traditional and unceded lands of the Denina people. And these cultures have been in relationship with salmon for time in memoriam. And we're here to really celebrate that connection to salmon that we all share as Alaskans. And that's what Salmon Fest does every single year and that's what we're gonna do tonight. And we're gonna kick right off with uh, some hometown favorites, the KP Brass Band. Here we go. All right, thanks for joining us. Let's feel like funking it up, guys. One, two, and one, two, three. <laughs> I feel like fucking it up, feel like fucking it up. I feel like fucking it up, feel like I feel like fucking it up. 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 I feel like I'm fucking it up. Here we go.
expand. And they're going to be with us all day today, beginning of every hour. We're very excited to have them here, and we're very excited to share the love for Bristol Bay, one of my favorite places on earth. Now, before we get into things, I want to show those of you that are not from Alaska or don't have the Alaska insider knowledge where to find Bristol Bay. Take your right hand, put it in front of you, fold your fingers back like this, and turn your hand around. There you have the map of Alaska. Ta -da. The Bristol Bay is located above the Alaska Peninsula and below the Yukon Valley. It's not down here in Jonah, it's not up here in Barrow, but it's this remarkably vast expanse of land and water that drains into Bristol Bay. The watershed of Bristol Bay is about the size of the state of Ohio. And there's so much to celebrate and so much to love about the place. One thing to celebrate is the incredible run of salmon that came to us again this year. 57 million fish have returned. 57 million fish. There was a day that we had 3 million fish come back and a week of 2 million fish a day. It's an incredible productive ecosystem and it's beyond, beyond compare. We're very proud to be associated with that phenomena. We heard a story from our friend Pete Andrew out in Dillingham. He said he saw a school of fish coming up into the bay, into the river, 15 miles long. 15 miles long and dense enough that he could walk across that. Now, if you know Pete Andrew, that's a lot of fish. So we're here to celebrate and send our love to Bristol Bay and the folks that live there and depend on it. So 10 years ago, Salmon Fest was born to protect that very ecosystem and community and fishery that Dave just described, Bristol Bay. Uh, Ten years ago, we were facing the pebble mine, and today we are even closer to facing the reality of pebble mine. So even though this year looks different, it's even more important for us to gather. Um, so we're really excited to entertain you with some incredible music today, but we also want to provide you with the tools to uh, take action to protect Bristol Bay. So we'll talk about that later on. Um, but we're really, really excited to highlight the voices of Bristol Bay while highlighting art and music that uh, are standing up to protect Bristol Bay, and we hope you do too. So um, we're going to go right into one of our first sets. It's a, <laughs> a true troubadour who speaks, who speaks from his heart and is always, always, always at our festival. I think many of you know him. His name is Tim Easton, and he has a great set for you. Yeah, he comes all the Greetings, every... Salmon Fest friends. It's Tim Easton here, checking in from Nashville, Tennessee. Or maybe I'm in Alaska. Who knows? Anyways, I wrote this song for you. It's called The Festival Song. <laughs> Just in time to see our favorite band All the people out there look just like us They were young, you know, they looked just like us Remember that beat, remember that song It never felt so good to sing along I was wondering why it felt so good Then I looked into a dozen pairs of eyes And I understood When we all come together like the world is gonna be all right well, in the middle of the night by the fireside you played my favorite song we share the smoke and we beat the drum Ooh, me baby won't you ride me high i saw you dance under the new moonlight from the little chick to yaskers farm We'll wake up in each other's arms I was wondering why it felt so good Then I looked into a hundred pairs of eyes And I understood When we all come together It feels like the world is gonna be all right Now, 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 now. When we left 
at the festival We were crying in the back of the van When it could have been the drugs, it should have been your band When it could have been the hugs, it should have been your band To all the people out there Travel safe and take good care And when someone falls, would you pick them up? Take care of those who the fill their cup They get nice and dirty See that no one's hurting Don't wear too many clothes Get some sunshine on your soul Don't be a glass hole And watch those ashes And pick up your trashes And in the long, long line Look into each other's eyes Spread that love all around the world Yeah, we'll see you next year at the festival That's right Wondering why it feels so good Just look into a thousand pairs of eyes And you'll understand When we all come together When we all come together Come on When we all come together It feels like the world is gonna be alright It's gonna be alright It's gonna be alright It's gonna be alright It's gonna be alright Pebble mine has got to go. Pebble mine, no, no, no. Pebble mine has got to go away. Big love to you. I'll see you soon. Well, and big love to you back, Tim. That was Tim Easton. We're very happy that he was able to join us today. You know, putting this thing together was not hard at all. It was a lot of work, but it wasn't hard to get the artists and our salmon champions engaged because of the passion for the place, the passion for Bristol Bay, and the urgency of the need for taking action. If you haven't been following this saga, it's a long one. It started back in 1988 when this massive deposit of pretty low-grade gold, copper, and other minerals was found at the headwaters of two of Bristol Bay's most important river systems. Maybe not most important, but most productive. Um, that location is the wrong place for a deposit of ore and all that it implies. Since 1988, 30-some years ago, the saga continues. And maybe Zoe and Bridget could drop in a link to a timeline map that shows you the first 25 years of that. But bringing it up to today, back in 2017, the uh, administrator of the EPA, Mr. Pruitt, green-lighted the Pebble Limited Partnership to begin its permit application. We've been through a very compressed period of time when the U.S. Corps of Engineers is to be evaluating the plan submitted by Pebble Limited Partnership. So we're up to a critical point in history right now is the final review, the final EIS or environmental impact statement was delivered just last week, just the 24th of July. And we're in a 30 day period, waiting period, not an official comment period, but a waiting period until a record of decision can be issued and then a mine permit. Well, those of us here and many of you around the state and many of you around the country don't think that's a very good idea. So it's time to do something. What, what can people do, Satchel? So it's really important for the decision makers who have the ability to move the dial on this issue to hear from Alaskans and people all over the country right now that we're opposed to Pebble Mine. We're really, really needing the EPA to step in and use their Clean Water Authority to veto Pebble Mine once and for all. So we need to talk to Lisa, Lisa Murkowski, Dan Sullivan, the Alaska State Senators, and Chris Laddick. He's the Regional Director of the Alaska Area for EPA. And we need to tell them that they need to do everything in their power to veto Pebble Mine. So if you click on the link that's embedded into this live cast, you will find all the tools you need to contact them. There's an action form that you can fill out and sign and send right their way right now. There's talking points and there's phone numbers. That's really all they need is to hear from you. So uh, we're going to collectively motivate them to um, do their jobs and protect the last and greatest salmon run on the planet. 
Um, the w one other thing that you can do to help us fight Pebble Mine is to donate and provide resources for the organizations who have been sustaining this battle um, and will continue to sustain it until it's over. So if you have um, anything, <laughs> anything to donate, now would be an excellent time to do so. Um, so th again, that's on the link in the landing page, which is just in the description under the live feed. So take a look. There's so many tools on there that will help. Um, and before we get to our next artists, we want to um, cut to another artist that is with us today. Art is a foundational piece of any movement, especially the salmon movement. Uh, there are salmon artists all over this state, and Caitlin Vadla works right here in the Cook and Lake Keeper office, um, and she's a phenomenal artist herself and normally paints at Salmon Fest. So she's here live painting, and um, we're just going to watch her paint throughout this event. And at the end of this event, if you would like to bid on the painting that she's working on, you can go again to that landing page and go to our au silent auction and bid for the painting she's uh, whipping up today. And I couldn't say for sure what she's painting, but I would wager that it starts with an S and ends in an almond. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so go ahead and take a look at Caitlin's art throughout the show and maybe make a bid. And coming up next, we have two wonderful solo artists. Um, one is near and dear to many Alaskans' hearts. Her name is Kat Moore. She, you may mm -hmm. know her from Super Saturated Sugar Strings yep. or The Forest That Never Sleeps. She always comes to the stage with joy and compassion, and we're excited to hear from her. But first, we have another troubadour that every time he comes up to Alaska causes chaos and mayhem in the music scene, but we love him for it, Todd Snyder. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, please make me feel very welcome to this Alaskan festival. Little loud place, little loud tune, so lost in space. Racing that moon, climbing a wall, a hurricane. Still overall, I can't complain. All I wanted was one chance. Let freedom ring. They said I'd have to get a permit, a bunch of tags, and everything. I never made it through the red tape. I got this paper hat. I got a job working weekdays. You want fries with that? I got nothing to lose. Ain't nothing to gain Like a one-way ticket to cruise in a passing lane Can't complain well, I was talking with my girlfriend Told her I was stressed I said I'm going off the deep end She said, God, for once, give it a rest We're all waiting in the dugout Thinking we should pitch how you gonna throw a shut out if all you do is bitch? I've got nothing to lose. Ain't nothing to gain. Well, I get one way ticket to cruise in the passing lane. I can't complain. Now I've got a brand new dance. I need one more shot. I just need one last chance. You know I won't get caught Gonna make my last stand And this time I can't be bought mm, Then again on the other hand How much have you got? I've got nothing to lose I have nothing to gain Like a one-way ticket to cruise And pass in lane I can't complain Little loud place, little loud tune, so lost in space, racing the moon, climbing the wall of a hurricane, still over. Right, all right. 
people are always asking me what my favorite place to play is. And I tell them really quickly, it's Alaska. And I mean it. Homer in particular, but the whole thing. Uh, I hope I get to see you all soon. I do miss it up there. Two sisters. I've been gone for so long Feeling good like I'm coming home Back to my friend and all the places I want to see It's like a rainbow in the sky A certain twinkle in everybody's eye Got me feeling like they believe in what I am And what I am trying to be Music's just right, I, I'm feeling better with the every single song. I look around, everybody's my friend, everybody's got this big old grin. I say, hey, when this chorus comes along, everybody jump on. Be safe up there, we'll do the same down here in the low 48. Yeah, yeah, make you one day. Only make you one smile. We go down, down, down in a country. We was hoping you would stick around and pick and sing a while. We'll see you up there sometime soon, I hope. Love you. Hello, Salmon Fest. What's up? It's Cat here, the forest that never sleeps. Um, so happy to be here as part of Virtual Salmon Fest. Um, I'm going to play you a couple of tunes, but uh, more importantly, I just want to say thank you for joining in and thank you so much to the Cook Inlet Keeper and to Salmon Fest and uh, to everybody out there who's helping to protect our wild salmon. Um, let's keep working, keep fighting every day to stop Pebble Mine. Oh, come on. So anyway, this song um, in that vein is called The Truth Ain't Coming From The Crown. And it is a tune that I play with my bandmates in the lateral lines. Oh, by the way, I hope you see I wore my festival garb. Woo! Yeah. All right. Shall we do this? What do you think? You ready? Well, the gas is burning. Breath of a dragon. Now bombs are falling. Nobody's laughing. Blood and the body. Cover the ground. Serenity. It ain't been. Yes, there's a new word coming from the kingdom. We'll be hot strong and always keep on singing. We'll be stay long after. Will they try to bring us down? Cause the truth, it ain't coming. 
coming from the ground. Well, the jester's coming and telling tall tales. Meanwhile, horsemen are shooting arrows, ransacked our village with the midnight fires because that castle is full of liars. Yes, there's a new word coming from the kingdom. We'll be headstrong and always be singing. We'll be stay long after for they try to bring us down. Cause the truth, it ain't coming from the ground. Colors running, deceitful cunning. Since the justice left the hall, we had a dream, and now they're just big scheming. But liberty stands tall. Yes, there's a new word coming from the kingdom. Will they cut strong and always keep on saying? Will they stay long after? Will they try to bring us down? But the truth. see I got my full jumper on ready to shake it shake it shake it um so anyway that was a tune called the truth ain't coming from the crown I played that with the lateral lines and uh that's David Leahy and Chris Lassane of the dirty hands in there and Gary Fisher on drums Chris is way better at playing this thing than I am but you know whatever you do do what you do you know um this next tune I'm gonna play for you is the last song I will play for you today and it is a song called Sugar or Salt that was inspired by my dear friend Mariah Phelps in the super saturated sugar strings. So uh, this is for her and for all of you who I love out there who, uh, you know, have had days that are, you know, tougher than others. So uh, this is called Sugar or Salt. And uh, again, I just want to say keep fighting. Sometimes it feels, feels like the immensity of the universe is just barreling down or uh, you know barreling down the road towards you settling heavily on your shoulders but uh if we all keep doing our parts then in the end we'll succeed because it takes the work of many hands and just by tuning in today you're supporting that so keep doing stuff like that keep sharing it with your friends and let's stop this mine and protect our salmon forever Is it sugar or is it salt? Either way, it ain't your fault. Days go by and I wonder when. Oh, I could see your face again. Yeah, I could see your face again. Hey, Billy, what's up? <laughs> We're recording for Salmon Fest. Say hey. Hey, Billy just showed up for the festival. He rode in on a motorcycle. You can't see it, but it's awesome. <laughs> I said, now I play this old guitar. Yes, someone bashed in your old car. Plastic sheet over the rear. I said, why do we live in a world of fear? Yeah, why do we live in a world of fear? But time's been hard. Time's been hard on everyone. But we keep Song. 
because they say life is bittersweet. Sometimes lemons are what we eat. But I know I'll make it through as long as I share my table with as long as I share my table with you. So may your dreams be good when your days are not. And may we wake up thankful for what we got. No, we may not have everything. Oh, but we got each other and we can. Yeah, we got each other and we can sing. The time goes by. Bling, Garden, I. And then it's gone. But we keep. Thanks, friends. I sincerely miss you very, very much. I love your music. I love your energy in the crowd and on the dance floor. And I wish we could all be together, but I'm so thankful that we are gathering virtually to keep everyone safe and to support a good cause. So thanks for tuning in today. Thanks for tolerating all my bad notes here in the backyard. Mwah! See you soon. For those of you that haven't had the opportunity to attend Salmon Fest, you know there are iconic things about the event. Tie-dye, occasionally, lots of dancing, and if you've ever been in the uh, beer tent, you'll know and recognize these elegant uh, status symbols and fashion accessories. These are the hats worn by the trivia crew, biologists that wander around accosting people, asking them trivia, trivial questions, usually about salmon. You'll find us putting these hats on a few times during the broadcast. But it's time for our first trivia question. For three points, there's really no point value here, but for, for uh, uh, no, I can't give you a free trip. It's just for fun. When you fill in the answer, when you come up with the answer, you can type it into the chat bar. It's not that hard. We're going to start off easy. The question is this. Uh, what country is the Pebble Limited Partnership, which is actually Northern Dynasty Minerals, based? What country is Northern Dynasty Minerals based? There you go. Have at it. All right? So now it's time for hats off. Let's get back to serious business. We're sure those folks that are viewing from the lower 48 or somewhere outside the U.S. border would like to know what Alaskans think of the Pebble Mine. Well, I tell you what, the most recent polling done says 62% of Alaskans think the mine is a bad idea and should be vetoed. 62%. Satchel, I don't know of any other issue in this state where 62% of Alaskans agree. So I think the only other example might be salmon themselves, right? Because we all care about salmon and we're all connected by that thread. Let me can we switch gears maybe a little bit and start talking about the people that are connected to the place to sort of put faces attached to those numbers? 
Absolutely. There are some people in the state who have really been on the front lines of this fight since day one. Um, and we're going to kick it off with someone that I truly admire, Melanie Brown. She has been a voice for not only the commercial fishing culture of Bristol Bay, but the native Alaskan culture of Bristol Bay for as long as I've known her. And um, yeah, g pay attention and listen to Melanie Brown's words. She's inspiring. And here she is. Hello, my name is Melanie Brown. I am reaching out to you from Tlingit Ani uh, in the place known as Juneau, Alaska. Uh, normally this time of year I would be in Bristol Bay uh, just wrapping up my commercial fishing season on the lands of the Yupik, Sukhbyak, Unangan, and Dena'ina people. Um, I myself am connected to, um, to Bristol Bay through my mother, Catherine Brown, who was born in the town of Naknik on um, the Naknik River, which I view as um, kind of like the main artery of our existence. And um, I, I've spent every summer of my life there. My great-grandmother gave me my Yupik name the first time she saw me. Uh, it means someone who's come from far away. And right now I feel so far away from everybody, but I'm looking forward to the day that we can all dance together at Salmon Fest again. Yeah, and I'm really scared about um, the proposed pebble mine and what it could do to the way of life um, for uh, commercial fishermen like me, but namely for the, the people of that land and uh, how, how they identify with that land and how, in, in my mind, even though I don't live there year round, I feel like it's, it's my identity, it's who I am. I am who I am because of that place. And, and I know many others feel the same way. Um, I guess uh, what I hope for, for Bristol Bay and anybody who has a connection to Bristol Bay, um, I just hope that all of us, if we haven't already figured it out, uh, I just hope that all of us can figure out and agree that salmon are worth so much more than money. And in my heart, in my mind, I know they're worth way more than gold, too, or any other metal for that matter. And I think if we can all agree on that and um, have our thinking uh, for the future and the world we want to live in uh, be guided by that thought, I think that um, it would be a really bright future. But if we don't start uh, thinking in terms other than um, the most monetary gain that we can make, um, I don't think our future is going to look very bright. So hopefully we can all find a way to be guided by things other than money. <laughs> Even though money is a, a serious consideration. Um, thank you, thank you, and uh, yeah. Next year, Nanilchik. <laughs> See you then. Wow. Thanks, Melanie. That was remarkable. Uh, she's an inspirational activist and uh, member of the community. Now, you'll notice that we've got the hats on. Again, that can only mean one thing. It's time for the answer. What country is the Pebble Limited Partnership based? Do, do, do. Canada. If you guess Canada, select a prize from the prize bucket. If you can find the prize bucket, go there and select a prize. Good luck. <laughs> but now it's time for more music. Music is what strings this thing together, and I'd like to introduce a band that debuted last year at the 2019 Salmon Fest. You know, there are bands that just sizzle and attract of instant following. Many bands play a few different times during the three-day event. This band, by the third day, had a packed, packed stay, or a packed audience on their stage, and there's a reason for that. They've got horns, they've got a remarkable singer, and they're a terrific band. Now, many of the videos you'll see are people playing in their garage or outside or wherever. What you're about to see is a video that the Burroughs, our featured band now, provided. It was shot in the before time, so there are actually people in there, but it's not been shared before. So this is a uh, debut of the Burroughs. You'll also get a wonderful introduction 
introduction from one of the bandmates talking about the cause and their love for Alaska in Bristol Bay. So Scott, roll it. Let's head out to the boroughs. What's up, Sam and Fess? Bree Harris here, manager and saxophonist with the Burroughs, coming to you from Colorado. I'm so glad that we're able to participate in this live stream and connect with you guys a little bit here on the internet, since unfortunately we weren't able to in person this year. You know, last year when we came to Salmon Fest, it was the first time any of us in the band had been to Alaska at all. And we were just floored and amazed by the natural beauty of the area, the warmth and generosity of the people, and also the uniqueness of the salmon culture in Bristol Bay. We also learned a ton from you guys about how the pebble mine threatens a lot of that uniqueness. We know that the pebble mine is the wrong mine in the wrong place, and it's up to all of us to do what we can to prevent it from ruining the pristineness of Bristol Bay. So please do what you can for this cause, call your representatives, donate to the cause, and keep celebrating what's special about salmon culture in Bristol Bay. We can't wait to see you guys in person in 2021. We hope we're able to connect and play and party again soon with you all. Until then, please stay safe, stay healthy, peace, love, and music from the boroughs. Uh, Fort Collins, you come to get down tonight. Lord, I cannot believe every word that comes out of your mouth sounds like hate. Well, tell me, please, do you want to be alone? Or will you stand with me? And for freedom, will you sing? Let me hear you now. Someone else will do it better if we wait. Well, we don't have time. We got to stand for those who can't. A voice crying for the weak. Singing for those who can't speak. Let me hear you now.
love you. Now, there's only one way to get through this world, and that's with somebody by your side. You can't do anything without some friends. So together in this room right now, we gonna get by. We gonna get by. We gonna get by with our friends now. Come on.
Well, here's the deal. Why not follow their directions and share this with your friends? Let people know that you're watching Salmon Fest streaming for Bristol, Bristol Bay. I'll tell you what, I'm excited about the next salmon champion who's coming up. He's a friend. He's a, a veteran of the seafood processing industry out in Bristol Bay for decades. He's currently the president and CEO of Bristol Bay Economic Development Corporation in Dillingham. We've got some video he sent in from his uh, home out on the confluence of the Wood and the Nushagak River. Here comes Norm Van Vactor. Hi, my name is Norman Van Vactor. Welcome to Salmon Fest 2020. God, it's hard to believe I'm doing this via Skype and Zoom and all the other technology that we're all finding ourselves having to deal with every day. My wife and I, you know, took a lot of pleasure in going to the first couple Salmon Fests, and we really look forward to being able to do that again. Hi, Freya. Are you going to join me in this quick video? Yeah. This is my granddaughter, Freya. Hi. And you know what? This is a major reason why I'm here tonight with a few words that I want to share with you, saying what I'm going to say. And I'm proud to say I now call Dillingham, Alaska my home. I've been involved in the pebble issue for the better part of 18 or 19 years. Um, I, I mean, I can't even fathom that here I am talking about this issue after 18 or 19 years. I really thought that after just a couple of years of educating our public on the issue, that common sense would prevail. But, unfortunately, common sense hasn't prevailed. Hi, Freya. Hi. Again, a major reason I'm here speaking to you tonight is because of this generation and the fact that we want to leave Earth, we want to leave Bristol Bay, we want to leave fisheries, not only the way we found them, but hopefully in even better shape than we found them. And why is Bristol Bay so important? Again, literally off in my own backyard right here is Bristol Bay. Off my left shoulder is the Nushigak River, and back behind the trees off my, my right shoulder is the Wood River. You know, it's been incredible year after year after year. But here we are again, salmon season 2020 just coming to a conclusion. And guess what? Yet another incredible year. We're probably pushing right around 57 million fish this year again in spite of all the other issues that we're having to deal with. You know, it's just, Mother, mother Nature <laughs> is just wonderful. Um, once again, Bristol Bay is going to produce probably close to 60% of not just the U.S.'s salmon supply, but the world's sockeye salmon supply. You know, we're going to employ close to 17,000 people. We're going to have anywhere from 1.5, we're going to produce anywhere from 1.5 billion to $2 billion worth of, of product. Um, Preya, did you want something to add to that? What did you want to say? Um, our earth is good and the earth... Save our salmon. The salmon is good and they eat them and, and then we eat them. Yeah, we want to save our salmon so that we can eat them and that they can continue to feed the world, right? Yep. Let's stop the virus. Let's stop let's, the virus. And let's stop the mine. And stop the mine. Thank you, everyone. All right, thank you, Norm and Freya. That was really adorable. And we want to remind you, if you have a little extra change in your pocket, there's a donation button on that landing page that's embedded in the description of the live feed. We're really needing to ensure that we have enough resources to stop this mine once and for all so that future generations like Freya can continue to enjoy the salmon culture of Bristol Bay. Up next, we're going to get back to the music with a fiery duo. You should know them by now. It's the Indigo Girls. They're Grammy winning. They're politically and socially active, which is what Salmon Fest loves. We always pull in artists that have our cause at heart. Let's hear the Indigo Girls. Hey, I'm Emily. I'm Amy, and we're Indigo Girls, and we really appreciate Salmon Fest reaching out to us and asking us to share a couple songs, but also to tell you all that we are strongly opposed to the Pebble Mine. Yeah, it's a, it's a really big project, huge project. We've been fighting it for a long time, 
It threatens the salmon up there, the sockeye salmon. About half of the world's salmon is up there. And um, last time we played Sa Salmon Fest, we had a blast and it really helped us understand why you need to protect the area because we were up there and saw it all. Um, we also can, stand in solidarity with the tribes of yeah, Crystal Bay who you, count on that salmon. And you can donate to them by, uh, there's like on the site, there's like ways to get in touch with the EPA and your representatives and you can click on, on the different links and you can also donate to the United Tribes of Bristol Bay to help out with this. So thanks for everything that you guys are doing. And thanks to Salmon Fest for everything they do. It's a, I mean, we had a blast. We, we had such a good time. Never so forget it. We appreciate that. But y'all get involved. And um, I, think we, I think we can beat the mine. It's this one last push against it and um, get out of the mess we're in. And, move on to some environmental protection. So y'all work to do this, okay? Alaska's beautiful. We want to help y'all keep it that way. Yeah, thanks y'all. Here's a song for all the activists out there. Through the dust bowl, through the dead. Grandma was a suffragette. Blacklisted for her publication, blacklisted for our generation. Go, go, go.
We just got to see uh, some aerial art orchestrated each year at Salmon Fest by our local Homer artist, Mavis Muller. It's a remarkable thing to pull people out of the festival up at the Nilchik State Fairgrounds and have them arrayed in those positions and to send a message about the importance of clean water, of salmon in Bristol Bay. And it's a terrific way to participate in an art project that essentially has you sign a petition by including your, art, your body in that art. So those are terrific and hats off to Mavis. She's a great organizer. She's an artivist in her nomenclature, I think. And let's look upstairs as well. Let's take a look and check in on Caitlin because we've got art happening right now at Salmon Fest streaming for Bristol Bay there. Is that, has that involved some kind of watery? There she is, Caitlin. Do you see a fish in there yet, uh, Satchel? Is she, I think is there I any see hinting where of? a fish will be. All right, there's a fish space located. So that's terrific. I can't wait to see how that comes out. Remember, you can bid on that fish uh, if it is a fish or whatever it is, you can bid on that. By going to the landing page embedded in the description of the live feed, there'll be a big bid on live art button. Right. Well, we're uh, winding out of the first hour, and this hour, in case you were uh, keeping track, had 63 minutes in it, but we're pretty darn good. We've got a lot more to say. We're going to be right back with the second hour. We're going to bring the KP Brass Band to kick things off again. So go put your tie-dye on, relax, we'll be back in just a minute. But first, we're going to roll our line. Welcome back to the second hour of Salmon Fest streaming for Bristol Bay. We're going to start every hour off with our house band, KP Brass Band. Here we go. Early in the morning, late in the evening, bound if I'm breathing, tambourine ringing, how can I hear you? I can't get near you now, 
The whole world problem. Watch the whole world crumble. Big Chief gonna get them now. Big Chief gonna get them now. Gonna head for the mountain. Not praying for no boulder. I'm the engine toller. Gonna free a while in. I'm the young Pocahontas. Singing by ya ya. Goddamn right. Big boy, are you ready? Engine pretty. Be the best in the city. Gonna broaden your mind. Don't deny your name. Rest in peace, Black Feta. Put us in the Hall of Fame. Holy cow, we're back. That's the KP Brass Band. Let's go get them. What a good uh, motivational tune for today. Let's go get them. You can take action right now. If you go to the landing page and take action, you've got options, you've got phone numbers, you've got ways to send emails. We'll tell you what to do and we'll also provide great information on Pebble, on the current situation with the final environmental impact statement that's in play right now so let's do that together I really appreciate those guys did you notice it might have been raining out there just a little bit brass instruments don't melt but mm, they come close sometimes I'll tell you what uh, that water is great for our salmon streams it keeps them full it keeps those fish fresh and healthy so we don't complain too much at least at this point in the summer when we get a little rain now <clears throat> uh, I want to introduce somebody that's an expert on those streams and rivers, a person that has spent uh, her professional career understanding Alaska's freshwater systems. She's a, a PhD, she's a fishery scientist, she's been involved in Bristol Bay for uh, probably a couple decades, a good friend, ladies and gentlemen, no, I'm introducing the wrong act. We're not going to go to Carol Ann Woody. I would just introduce Carol Ann Woody. She's going to come up after the next act. But in the interim, that was just a Carol Ann Woody teaser. In the interim, we're going to play for you a very dependable and energizing band from Santa Cruz, California. Our friends, the Kofus Brothers, have been around since some of the earliest Salmon Fest days, and they're back today uh, with a song for you. So take it away, Kofus Brothers. Alright, so hello, Salmon Fest. We're the Coffins Brothers, coming from Santa Cruz, California. We'll do a few songs for you. This one's called Better Days.
like to say we were standing standing with the people of Bristol Bay and um, we'd like to encourage you guys to anyone to donate to the United Tribes of Bristol Bay right now I know they're they, they need it more than ever but anyway we'll do one more song um, thanks again for having us here at Salmon Fest in any capacity
very much. Thank you. Salmon Fest. There's the Kofus Brothers, all the way from Santa Cruz, California, on Salmon Fest, streaming for Bristol Bay. Dave Applin with you, my close personal friend, Satchel Pondofino, here today trying to make the point that Bristol Bay is the place you want to be. And I've been out there with this next guest, Carol Ann Woody, Dr. Carol Ann Woody, fishery scientist. We were in the upper reaches of uh, a small stream, not far from where the pebble mine would be constructed. She was inventorying the fish as well as taking water temperature and all uh, inventorying all the organisms in the river to try and understand what was there and where they are. She's a remarkable person. Uh, she's a hero of mine. Ladies and gentlemen, our next salmon champion is Carol Ann Woody. Hi there. I'm Dr. Carol Ann Woody. I have a PhD in fishery science from the University of Washington. I served 20 years as a federal fishery scientist for three different agencies, and I ran my own consulting firm. I first came to Bristol Bay in 93 with the University of Washington to conduct salmon behavior studies at Iliamna Lake. That was after years of attempting to fix damaged salmon habitat after logging and urbanization. It was the first time I had the pleasure to work in intact salmon systems. Free flowing gin clear waters just filled with blood red sockeye. I had never seen anything like it. Fish nirvana. Since 2003, I've reviewed and critiqued the science conducted by Pebble Proponents as both a federal scientist and an independent consultant. When I found out Pebble was not planning on surveying hundreds of small salmon rearing streams that the mine could impact, I raised money and led the first studies that documented salmon, both on top of the Pebble deposit as well as in hundreds of miles of streams in and near the over 800 square miles of mining claims there. Bristol Bay is an extraordinary global resource. It supports the world's largest, most valuable salmon fishery provides about half the world's sockeye, and the two river systems Pebble will impact, the Quijack and Nushigak, produce about half of Bristol Bay sockeye. As of July 18th, 2020, almost 52 million wild salmon have returned to Bristol Bay, and the run continues, supporting over 14,000 jobs. Bristol Bay also supports endangered whales, the world's greatest concentration of seabirds, freshwater seals, most of the world's largest brown bears, king crab, caribou, and massive moose, to name just a few of its ridges. The Pebble Limited Partnership is actually a small Canadian firm, Northern Dynasty, that has never developed a mine. They claim the mine will not affect the fishery and that the salmon-rich streams around and draining the deposit don't produce many salmon. But they've never actually determined how many salmon return to those systems nor how many offspring they produce, something Alaskan biologists do annually. Their claim of no impact to fisheries is based on deeply flawed fishery studies. In my position as the National Park Service Regional Fish Biologist, and as indicated by other experts from EPA, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, NOAA, and Alaska Department of Fish and Game, in official comments to the Army Corps of Engineers, impacts to the fishery are grossly underestimated. This is particularly obvious when you read their latest plan that indicates they don't just plan to develop a small portion of the mine. In reviewing the EIS, it's clear they intend to develop the full 11 billion plus tons of it. And the potential impacts from that scenario have not been addressed at all, not in this EIS or anywhere. Thank you for participating, for caring, and please find out from our hosts, Dave and Satchel, what you can do to help conserve Bristol Bay, the last most productive wild salmon fishery left on the planet. Thank you. All right, thank you, Carol Ann. Here we go, we've got our trivia uniforms on, very mm -hmm. official. Yes. So you know there's another question coming at you. Yep. All right, here we go, folks. What are the species of salmon that return to Bristol Bay every year? Bonus points if you get both names. Extra bonus points, Satchel, if you can get 
the uh, Yupik or Chupik or Alutic or any other of the indigenous uh, languages here in Alaska, if you can get those names, we're going to award some extra special points. And keep counting those points, and we'll have a point count off at the end of the event. All right, throw your answers up in the comments. Let's take a second to check in with our live artist. We've got Caitlin upstairs. Let's see where she's at. It looks like there has, in fact, emerged a salmon from her stream. This is Bristol Bay streaming going on right now. Wow, that's beautiful. Remember, if you want to bid on this painting, you can go to the landing page embedded into the live stream and click Bid for Live, live Art. Awesome. Well, thanks, Caitlin. Keep it up. Well, uh, she's assured us she'll have that painting essentially done by the end of the hour three of the broadcast. But you'll have a little extra time if you'd like to bid on that, right? Yeah, we're going to keep this live art auction open until Tuesday at noon. So you have plenty of time to up the ante. Great. What's up next, Satchel? We're going to get back to the music. So we have two bands coming up next. Um, first, we have my absolute favorite Alaskan band, Hope Social Club. I was able to sit down with them at Salmon Fest 2018 and talk to them about their relationship with salmon. And uh, they did a little salmon jam about it. So we're going to cut to the jam. I think it's a tune that you'll recognize. This is Salmon Fest 2018 in the campgrounds with Hope Social Club. And then we're going to hear from you guys. We're at Salmon Fest in Nilchik, Alaska, and we're with Hope Social Club today. Well, what song are we going to play? Wild and Free, awesome. which is how we like our salmon. Indeed. <laughs> Just live your dreams, be wild and free. There ain't no need to explain them. Run to the mountains or run to the sea Just live your dreams, be wild and free I know a guy who plays the blues Sings every sad song like he's born there I ever love you once. 
Jim Lewin from Edge of the West, Great American Taxi, and a bunch of bands. I've played at Salmon Fest every time they've had it. And I'm happy to be here at the Virtual Salmon Fest, where we are going to help defeat the Pebble Mine and save the Bristol Bay, right? Okay, I thought I might play this song I wrote called The Shores of Davenport. This is a story song. It's kind of a ghost story. It goes on an awful long time, but since we're all sitting at home, I thought maybe you'd have time to listen to a story here. It's from... Uh, it's about this town, Davenport, California, just up the road from me here in California. I live in Santa Cruz, and uh, legend has it that in Davenport, they used to make an awful lot of moonshine back during the Prohibition, and they would sail that hooch up to San Francisco to supply the brothels and speakeasies of uh, Frisco in the Roaring Twenties. One time I was up there in Davenport at Whale City, my, one of my favorite places, and drinking, and uh, a ghost sat down and told me this story, so I made it into a song. In a cold, thick fog on the shores of Davenport In the wee hours of morn, forty cases were bought It was bootleg gin of the highest grade And they drank and talked till the deal was made when the price was paid and the liquor was sold, Captain said, stow this cargo down in the hold. With a heave and a hoe, they secured it below. Unfastened the lines and prepared the ship to go. But in the foggy darkness, they heard something knock and the sound of quick footsteps along the dock. Well, that must be the cops. We could all wind up in jail. For he fired three shots as the winds did wail. But then the mist, it cleared, and they saw her there. Corey cried out loud, and he tore at his hair. For his dear Katie Bell laid there upon the ground. Come to say farewell to her man, Corey Brown. Captain on his ship, where the contraband was stowed, heard police car sirens started coming up Coast Road. He said, all hands on deck, come on Brown, make haste. You must set sail now, we have no time to waste. But Brown had gone mad, he was out of his gourd. The first mate had to seize him and throw him aboard. His hands they lashed as they tied him to the mast. With the body of Katie Bell tied to him fast. It began to rain as a storm blew in, and they pushed off in to the howling winds. Out into the storm, the Celeste Marie set a western course and sailed out to sea. And the sirens screamed at the madman's cries in the driving rains as the waves did rise and they washed over the deck onto mad Corey Brown until they had to untie him or else he would drown but once he was freed he became quite irate and he suddenly started to fight the first mate the first mate fought back but to no avail. Corey struck a hard blow and knocked him over the rail. Then he went after the captain with a terrible look. 
chased him over the bow with a gaffing hook. Then he looked into the face of the one that he'd adored. He picked up her body and leapt overboard. Down into the depths, the two of them fell. It was mad Corey Brown and his bride Katie Bell. And they sank into the sea to their watery graves. Where they are to this day beneath the wind and the waves. While further to sea, the wind carried off the Celeste Marie with her sail still aloft. And if legends are true, that old ship still sails through the foggy mists on those windy gales. So all you young bootleggers, pirates, and crooks, Come heed this sad tale that you won't find in books And don't boast to your girl of the crimes you commit What she doesn't know won't hurt her a bit Cause if you go and tell her of some criminal plot Well don't be surprised if you both wind up caught And instead of retiring to the comforts of home you might sleep in the brine with the fish and the foam. And many a sailor has told a grim tale of a phantom ship. They have seen a sail, a haunted craft with no crew on hand. Forever to drift and never to land. And they say you can still hear old Corey Brown's ghost in the wailing winds on that northern coast and mysterious footsteps of the strangest sort still haunt the landing at old Davenport Thanks a lot everybody Save the salmon. All right, that was Jim Lewin with some sea shanties for you. Sea shanties say that fast. <laughs> All right, so we've known for the last several decades how Pebble Mine would threaten the Bristol Bay region and our fisheries in Bristol Bay, but it wasn't until the last couple years when the Pebble Limited Partnership started to put some plans out on the table did we realize that the project was going to creep all the way to the west side of Cook Inlet and have a much larger range of impact than we originally thought. So that has activated a whole new constituency group and I've got Drew Hamilton in the studio today to talk about why uh, Pebble Mine overlaps with your world and, um, and bears. Right on, thank you Satchel. Uh, yeah, we've always been concerned about Pebble Mine, but it was just a couple years ago when they unveiled, unveiled the rest of their plan, um, just how concerning this would be. And as you start to run infrastructure and uh, ports and power plants and things through the best bear habitat in the world, you start to threaten the bear viewing industry of South Central Alaska. And, you know, whether you know it or not, you're familiar with the bears of the Alaska Peninsula. They're the stars of Disney movies. They're the stars of every documentary you've ever seen about bears. They're the stars of viral videos. When people come to Alaska, the first thing they ask is, where do we see the bears? These are the bears we're talking about. We take them to Katmai Park, we take them to Lake Clark National Park, and we take them to McNeil River State Game Sanctuary. So if you're going to put a road and all this infrastructure right through the middle of the best bear habitat in the world, it's going to threaten our... $40 million bear viewing industry. We generate about 500 jobs. These are important jobs for South Central Alaska. So you're saying that Bristol Bay and Cook Inlet are really connected by bears? They're connected by bears. We start our season, uh, you know, early June, we're watching bears over on the Cook Inlet side. When uh, this time of year rolls around and those Bristol Bay fish start to make it up to the spawning grounds, we start going to Bristol Bay and we see a lot of the same bears. Those bears will go 40, 50, 60, 70 miles straight line to get to Bristol Bay to eat some of those 50 million plus salmon that are coming back. So as a businessman, how, how does Pebble Mine play into your plan? Uh, well, you know, as you know, <laughs> we've got a pandemic going on. It's already an unstable business environment. And now when we go out to see bears, we've got the cloud of pebble mine hanging over us. Because you know that if 
uh, we don't take the crucial steps right now to stop this mine, it's yet another resource we might lose. So uh, we have a couple friends and I, we went out a few weekends ago, um, just to let people know what bear viewing is and how they can do it. So we made a little movie. We're going to share it with you now. So let's play the movie. Great. So this has been 20 years of guiding bear viewing trips for me. And really, I got into it because I wanted to spend more time in places like this, the wild places. It was taking people out to share these experiences so that somebody who's coming from a city somewhere could experience what I did when I came to this place for the first time. Uh, coming into Benitna Bay here. Off to our right, we're looking up into Lake Clark National Park. And Chinitna Bay is the southern boundary of Lake Clark National Park itself. So everything north of us is parkland, which would be out this window. Everything out that way, um, until you get down to McNeil River State Game Sanctuary and Katmai Preserve is kind of a mishmash of native lands and state lands. And so all of this is part of one giant complex that makes up the best bear habitat in the world. A lot of ways for me, this feels like coming home. This is the first place I spent any significant amount of time watching brown bears. A meadow like this is just an example of the seasonal abundance of the Alaska Peninsula. This is gonna be the first good nutritional source they have in the spring when they come out, and this is where they'll congregate, and a lot of mating will happen in, out in this meadow here. But there's not enough nutrition here to support this many bears over the course of the whole summer. So these bears have to move to other seasonal abundances. They all have these different paths that they'll take in order to utilize these different resources that flare up over the course of the summer on the peninsula here. I know bears that have gone 40, 50, 60 miles uh, cross country to utilize different food sources. So when you talk about putting roads and, and industrial corridors right through the middle of bear habitat, uh, there's no way you're not going to fragment that habitat and prevent bears from moving like they traditionally have across this landscape. So 50 years ago, the concept of bear viewing didn't even exist. And 50 years ago, this park didn't exist. And so by preserving this habitat and having the Alaska Peninsula preserved as this wilderness, it's really opened things up economically. So we're now to the point where the bear viewing industry in Alaska, which is a homegrown business, uh, generates about $40 million a year for the local economy in South Central Alaska. It generates about 500 jobs. And these are jobs that pay mortgages. These are jobs that put food on the table. 76% of that money stays in South Central Alaska. So this is an important part of our diversified tourist economy here. Bears on the Alaska Peninsula are getting pinched right now. They've got this intact habitat that they've had for so long, but now you've got development coming in. You've got Pebble wanting to put roads. You've got Johnson Tract wanting to put a mine right over that hill over there. You've got oil and gas development all up and down Cook Inlet. And so these places that are wild are becoming less wild every day. And there's no attention paid to the cumulative effects that their industrial processes would have on a landscape like this. Pebbles footprint would go all the way from the other side of Lake Iliamna over to the Kenai Peninsula. So it would mean the open pit mine, it would mean the road corridor, power plants, uh, shipping facility, natural gas pipelines, slurry lines. I mean, Army Corps, when they were doing their studies, they did not look at their impacts to bears more than three miles out from the impacted areas. So you could put a port right there, and they're saying they don't even need to look at the cumulative impacts that it would have on, on bear populations like this. These are the bear populations on which we depend for our bear viewing industry. It's opening up this place to a scale of development that is just incompatible with the wilderness we already have. And it's the wilderness that makes this place so special. And it's the wilderness that is providing income to people like me. Pebble says they can coexist with the fisheries and the industries that already exist out here. But the science has already showed us that that's not possible. The mine they're advocating for now has already been ruled by the Environmental Protection AG Agency as being incompatible with the fisheries on the other side of these mountains here. 
So the people that would be most impacted by this mining project have no faith in the permitting system, and this is what would be at stake. By protecting habitat for bears, you are protecting habitat for everything else. If you want to see wilderness like this preserved, the time to take action is now. We need you to write to your Congress people. We need you to call your Congress people. We need to let your Congress people know that this wilderness is worth fighting for and just say no to Pebble Mine. Who wouldn't want to spend some time out on the uh other side of Cook Inlet with Drew and a bunch of bears. You know, I've had some remarkable experiences with Drew, and uh, I know that when you go down to Homer down to the float plane base where many of those uh, travelers take off from, you'll hear every accent and you'll hear every language you can imagine because that asset over there across the bay is world class. It's been compared with, you know, seeing the gorillas in, in Africa or whatever. It's a once in a lifetime oppor opportunity. And, and Drew tells it like it is. So thanks a lot, Drew, that was, that was terrific. And the, the video, awesome. Um, I'm sure you're wondering why Satchel and I are wearing our colorful hats. Well, it's time for the answer to our previous trivia question. You'll remember the trivia question was which species of s salmon return to Bristol Bay each year. She was kind of miserly with her clue because she could have told you there are five species, but she did tell you there are two names for each one commonly held. Pink salmon, the other name? Humpies. humpies. All right. Uh, coho salmon, the other name? Silvers. Silver. Uh, sockeye salmon? Reds. Very good. And Chinook salmon? Kings. Kings. And I've forgotten who. Oh, chums, otherwise known as? Dogs. Dog or Keta now. That's a, that's a new brain. Spectacular, but of course, the number one fish uh, salmon species returning to Bristol Bay are the sockeyes. And why? Because that terrain is perfect for sockeye reproduction. That thick layer of glacial gravels over the bedrock, permeated with water, flowing into ponds and streams. Red salmon need a year at least, and sometimes two, to grow from a fry, and then they smolt and swim downstream. So that landscape, that flat basin that is most of Bristol Bay is perfect habitat. All that meltwater off the mountains, all that rain, you couldn't find a better place for a salmon. But I digress. I'm sorry. Now it's time for more music. We're going to go and visit two bands in this set. Uh, we're going to meet Adam Grohl. Adam is the, I wonder if the, his other bandmates say, but he seems to be the front man for a favorite Salmon Fest band called Horseshoes and Hand Grenades. Just this power-driven, bluegrass-infused energy. Um, that's the band that rock, rocks the stage. It, it vibrates as they jump and play and sing. It, it's, uh, I think I've taken a fire fire extinguisher out on stage once because I thought it was too hot. <laughs> Adam is by himself and that's probably good for everyone. He's out in the uh, out west, out in the mountains, thinking about wilderness and wild places and he's also thinking about Bristol Bay and, and Alaska. We connect with him. He and I have the same alma mater so I don't want <clears throat> to toss that around too much. We're going to hear a song from Adam. We're also going to hear from our friends the Rainbow Girls. This is a song they wrote for uh, the Standing Rock issue, and they thought it was appropriate to share with us today somehow. So, without any further ado, Scott, hit the button. Salmon Festers, how are ya? Adam Girl from Horseshoes and Hand Grenades here. I'm out in north central Wyoming, the Bighorn Mountains, and uh, just got out of the Cloud Peak Wilderness. And uh, man, I was thinking about how grateful I am for folks in the past who made the conscientious decision to preserve the Cloud Peak Wilderness up there. Uh, it's, you know, it's relatively untouched for all the future generations, and that's pretty damn cool. Um, you know, it made me think of Alaska and Bristol Bay, 
you know, right now we're uh, in a time period where we're kind of tasked with the unique decision to use our voices to be those conscientious people that, that save a place. So, you know, I guess I just want to want to reach out and say, reach, you know, hit up your representatives, um, use your voice on social media to spread the word about Bristol Bay. Um, you know, we're, I love eating salmon. Who doesn't love salmon? And, uh, you know, uh, it's also just a, a wicked, beautiful place. So, um, you know, definitely support preserving Bristol Bay and want to do a song called Wildlands, getting wild in the wildlands. We can still go outside and smell the wildflowers laying the grass and give shapes to the clouds. Hear the birds as they chase around their loves. We can still go outside sing a love song out loud there are no chains on your ankles no shackles around your hands you can get on up to your feet and get wild in the wild lands we can still take a walk in the fall moonlight Count the stars and all their fingers and toes. Track the owls by the sound of their trees. We can stand and feel the night wind as it moans. There are no chains on your ankles. No shackles around your hands. You can get on up to your feet and get wild in the wild. We can still climb to the top of the maples. We can run as wild as the antelope. We don't have to moan like a dove on a branch. We can smile as we keep this life right in scope. There are no chains on your ankles. No shackles around your hands. You can get on. salmon fest sure do love alaska let's take care of bristol bay let's make sure it's there for all the future generations much love rainbow girl land facebook we're gonna start with a really special song called song for standing rock
Hi, you guys. We have... <laughs> Thanks for joining us, everybody. Um, we're coming at you live from San Diego, from my mom's backyard, actually. Doesn't a Rainbow Girl Harmony make everything a little bit better? Yeah. Yeah, it's so sweet. All right, Dave, I see your uniforms on. I have my hat. Can you cue our trivia jingle? <laughs> All right, folks. How many dollars has the Pebble Limited Partnership spent lobbying DC since 2007? That's a great question. Boy, that would be hard to, for people to just figure. Is there any clues that you could? I've got a clue. Cook Inlet Keeper blog. <laughs> yeah, the answer probably lives somewhere on the Inlet Keeper blog. You have to read the whole thing, and no it's cheating. fascinating, so try it. All right, we're going to close this hour out with one of my favorite salmon champions of the evening. She's our youngest voice we've got in this show today. She's a teenager who fishes in Bristol Bay and um, is one of the many young people who have stepped up into leadership roles from having this sort of existential threat of pebble mine hanging over their heads their entire lives. Uh, the leadership has been really incredible and I, it's really important that we listen to their voices. So this is M. Taylor. My name is Emily Taylor and I'm a 16 year old commercial fisherman and I set net in Naknek, Alaska. My grandmother uh, was born and raised in Naknek and so I return there every summer to go commercial fishing and I've gone out there almost every summer my whole life. Um, I'm a fifth generation commercial fisherman. The permit that I now hold once belonged to my great great grandmother. So fishing is a huge part of my life and my culture and um, Bristol Bay is really important to me and the pebble mine would be on my people's lands and waters and would be really detrimental to the fishery there and um, the fishing, fishing is a huge part of my life and my livelihood and pebble, the thought of pebble being just able to wipe that out is really scary to me. Um, yeah, pebble has been something that has been in the back of my mind since I could conceptualize what that would even look like. Uh, yeah, it's been something that we've been fighting for quite literally my entire life. Um, and we, we thought that fight was over, but it's back now and, and we won't stop fighting for it. Um, I think the length that we've gone to fight Pebble really shows when you, when you walk around town, you can see uh, no Pebble signs and stickers. Even we have a, a No Pebble sticker that has been on a car for so long that it's not even red anymore. It's, it's yellowed and it's almost white. And you can see that throughout town. Some of those signs are so faded that because they, they've been there for so long. Um, and yeah, I just wanted to, to thank viewers and encourage you to help stop the mine and protect Bristol Bay. It's my home. Um, it holds my, my culture and my livelihood. And I think Dave and Satchel can tell you more about what you can do to help Bristol Bay. And the tr first of all, before I get to the trivia, obviously I'm most excited about the trivia, but I forgot what a powerful message M has. And um, in my professional world, I get to work with young people, that generation. And if there's hope around here, it's with that gang because uh, they can figure out how to do stuff in ways that I certainly can. So thank you, M, for uh, joining us and, and giving us your view of Bristol Bay and what's going on. Hey now, um, time for follow up on trivia. <laughs> Thank you, we switched roles there, if you were paying attention. Um, the question was, how much money has the uh, Northern Dynasty Mineral Pebble Limited, I'm not sure which that is, how much have they spent on lobbying? The answer, more than $15 million. Yes, I'm, I'm surprised too. So there you have it. Um, that's kind of a shocker. How much money does it take to get an approved permit for the massive open pit copper and gold mine in Bristol Bay? Now that's a cynical worldview you have, Satchel. I can't subscribe to that very easily. Um, anyway, but enough about us. 
Let's move on because we've come to the end of the second hour of uh, Salmon Fest streaming for Bristol Bay. I'm Dave Applin. And I'm Satchel Pondolfino. And we're going to go away for just a minute, but we'll come right back then, won't we? Yeah, we're going to roll our lineup. All right. Here we go. There you go, Scott. Hi everybody, we're back with the third hour of Salmon Fest streaming for Bristol Bay. I'm Dave Applin and I'm very excited to reintroduce the house band. Ladies and gentlemen, we're so glad to have the KP Brass Band. Here they go. All right, thank you so much again, Cook and the Keeper and Salmon Fest for having us. We are KP Brass Band. This is Living on a Prayer.
much. We're KP Brass Band. Have a wonderful day. And we're back in the studio. That's the KP Brass Band. We are so lucky to have had them. That's their last tune. I wish we could bring them, bring them back in and take them home with us because it really adds a, it adds so much to this experience. So thanks to those guys. Guess what? I've joined uh, in the studio right now by a friend and colleague, a person that I think knows quite a bit about Bristol Bay. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Rachel James. Hi, Rachel. Hello. You drove all the way down from the big city of Anchorage, Alaska to be with us today, didn't, didn't you? Yep. <laughs> and you brought your young son along. Yep, Augustine. Augustine, how old yep. is he? He's eight. He is, he is the most uh, inquisitive young person I've ever met. I think he's, there's some good parenting going on there or something. <laughs> Do what I can. <laughs> yeah. That's great. You're, you're born and raised in Alaska? Yep. I'm proud to be from the Valley. I grew up in Palmer and Sutton, uh, graduated from Palmer High. That's awesome. And, and you know something about Bristol Bay. You've spent time there? Yeah, my first trip to Bristol Bay was around 2005, 15 years ago. Uh, I went to communities in the Nushigak um, and have been back actually pretty recently. Well, when you say recently, this year? Um, it was uh, last year, um, and I, I decided to go ground truth one of the aspects of the Pebble Project. I flew to the Amokdadori Beach just across the way here in Cook Inlet, and I checked out the proposed site for the transportation industrial complex that Pebble wanted to build. Right. I actually followed the transportation route from the big humongous port site they proposed, um, 40 miles across the Alaska Peninsula to Iliamna Lake. And what was that like? What was the, the experience of crossing that part of Alaska like? It was really wild country. Um, a lot of wildlife sign, and probably the most interesting thing to me was there was water everywhere. We were walking over streams left and right. When we tried to actually cross the Mokdadori Creek, where they proposed the humongous port site, there were fish all under our feet, everywhere. It was just amazing. Um, really raw, wild country. Uh, a lot of small, almost tundra-like um, shrubs up over the pass because the wind blows so hard there. Yeah, it's that's, really raw. That, that's one of those uh, 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 gap, gap winds when you have pressure systems and. Cook Inlet versus in Bristol Bay that just blows through there. All yeah. that part of Cam Camishack Bay and beyond. And we, we got hit pretty good. We were in about 60 mile an hour winds as we passed through. Um, it's really the only breaking point in that part of the Alaska Peninsula range there. Now that's changed though. The Somehow during this process, kind of at the 11th hour, the preferred uh, transportation industrial corridor that linked the port facility to the mine, that changed. It's no longer going across Lake Iliamna in, in some ferries right, and the, all of that. The magical ferry is no longer. We've oh. seen a lot of changes, Dave, from the start of this, um, this uh, idea of this project decades ago. A lot of hand waving, a lot of um, back of the pizza box sketches that have changed. And one of the big ones that's changed in the past few months is the entire transportation corridor has shifted to the north. So now they're proposing um, and preferring to put their port site uh, in between um, kind of where bears move up closer to Lake Clark and Katmai along the coast. And get this, they don't even have permission from the landowners for this new road corridor. Well, that would automatically stop that development, wouldn't it? If the landowners didn't, didn't stop them or I didn't mean, allow it? A sane person would, would be thinking that way, <laughs> but unfortunately, um, Pebble Limited Partnership is proposing and um, audaciously stating that they will get permission despite the fact that um, the, the surface landowners and subsurface landowners do not have uh, permission, from, they do not have permission granted. So it's, uh, it's, it's definitely a close thing to watch as, as this mine pushes forward and as the, the government is on the eve of making their permitting decision. Now, you've visited with people up and down in Bristol Bay over many years. What, what do people think about the project? I, I know it's hard to like, characterize everybody's opinion, but what, what seems to be the general sentiment in the area? Yeah, I, maybe if I could just do it in like two or three letters, it would be capital N-O exclamation <laughs> point. I mean, we've got um, amazing speakers this afternoon and tonight that have been speaking about this. It, it's, it's incredible opposition. I think that um, the latest poll from Bristol Bay Native Corporation, the, 
the regional um, entity native corporation was putting it at about 62 percent opposition from shareholders um, and then oh shareholders okay. yeah oh the people in Bristol Bay um, their shareholders and that that is representative I think of the entire region we've got statewide polling at 62 percent opposition well wow. as as you stated earlier um, you know if we were flying on an airplane you sit next to a, a person um, on an airplane from Alaska most folks that you're going to talk to if you had to sit near him with COVID <laughs> you know, are, are opposed to this mine. It's, it's, um, we've had over a million comments thus far what, in opposition. What, yeah, over a million comments in opposition. What are people most concerned about? What, what have you learned over time? Well, most people are like me. They've got kids, they're thinking about the future, and the toxicity of this mine is the thing that makes most of us uh, have heartburn. You know, it's, it is, uh, not only is the open pit gonna be huge, but the actual cocktail of sludge and rocks that are in that toxic pit will be, need to be treated in perpetuity. So not only would um, some leak, whether it's small or catastrophic, kill fish and ultimately impact the humans that depend on the fish, um, but the actual treatment in perpetuity is another huge concern with this, this huge toxic. Perpetuity is pretty long, I think, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, I've heard it's pretty kind long. Kind of on the longer end of things. <laughs> yeah, and when you think about it, who's going to pay for that? But so wait, as I understand Pebble's 20-year mine plan, because this permit is only for 20 years, and when they're done, they're going to take all of that mined waste and leave, what, 85% of the ore in the ground, and they're going to put the waste back in the pit? I'm a little confused about that. Are they they're planning for a 20-year mine? So you're right about that. Um, Pebble Limited Partnership, that's one of the changes we've seen over time. Um, they're saying now, don't worry, it's just going to be 20 years to Alaskans. However, uh, the, the CEO of Northern Dynasty, who we've heard talked about throughout the afternoon, yes. has um, explicitly said on the record in global mining conferences, this is a multi-generational mine. Um, they are talking 78 to 100 years here. So. That's another, I would chalk that up in the Book of Lies, chapter five or six, yeah. <laughs> in terms of the size and the, the length of time. Yeah. Well, that's, that's am amazing, Rachel. I, is there any place uh, that people can go to learn more about the mine? Where would you recommend sending people to learn more? Besides our landing page with our action button and our donate button, <laughs> but where else would you send people to learn about this project? Well, there's a, a lot of folks that are working hard on this. The Defend Bristol Bay website is great. Um, you can figure out how to get there just by navigating defendbristolbay.org. And you'll see a lot of options for action there. There's uh, Stop Pebble Mine is another great site. Um, there's a whole bunch of ways you can yeah. be taking action right now. Yeah. So that, thanks for... That, that's awesome. Yeah, your browser can find many yeah. <laughs> reputable it's projects. Yeah, that's great. Well, thank you for joining us, Rachel. You came all the way. And I think um, I, I, I'd rather have no one but you to, to help us understand what's going on with the mind. So thanks for coming down Thanks here. for the opportunity. You bet. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to go back to the music right now. But as we do, you've got an opportunity to dig down and find that uh, donate button to help um, support the organizations that are on the front line of the Pebble fight. You can also learn more and some of the links. And I would recommend the link right on the landing page to that Bristol Bay Native Corporation BBNC document that identifies the shortcomings that have been, uh, some of the shortcomings that have been called out in the new mine plan. So I'd go there if I were you. If you've got a little uh, spare cash, and I know it's tight, but if you've got some, the campaign could use it. And also, uh, don't forget to uh, take action. And those action items are there for you to look at. But now we're going to go back to the music. This fir first band and this two band set, Sundog, they're from Anchorage. They rock. They're young people with a bunch of energy. And I just dig them so much. And after Sundog, you're going to hear uh, uh, Whiskey Class. And we'll talk a little bit more when we get back. But thank you, Rachel. Uh, thank you all for sticking with us. And Scott, take it away. Hey guys, this is Sundog. We're super excited that Salmon Fest decided to put on this online festival to raise awareness for what's happening in Bristol Bay. I just learned that 30 Native Alaskan tribes sustain off of the Bristol Bay Salmon Reserves. 
My family has lived off of Bristol Bay waters for many generations, and we recognize that sustainability and a natural way of life is paramount to Alaska's better future. Heck yeah, let's play some music about it. Save the fishies. If you want it to change your mind, that's fine. Woke up to your letters on the floor. Now the trees are whispering your Something tells me you're gonna change this time My mind is a black hole I need That's when you catch my better days to share that song with you. Stay tuned for more cool music and cool salmon facts. Save the fish! Save the fish
see okay the silver of the salmon and all that they bring to me it's beautiful amazing god bless oh my yeah that was good whiskey class they sound like they've been playing together for a long time and i think they have and that voice that just that's killer keep an eye on whiskey class i think they're going to be fun to watch over time so Satchel, what else we got to do this afternoon? I think we should swim upstairs and see how Caitlin's painting is developed. All right. Oh, there she is. Oh, it looks like one of Drew's bear friends has made his way oh, onto the painting. Wow. That's beautiful. That's great. Folks, you can bid on this beautiful work of art on our landing page. It looks like the bidding is all the way up to six hundred or so dollars. So thank you for everyone who's been bidding. Let's keep it going. Um, what about, what about the raffle? Do we have a raffle coming up? Is that coming We absolutely soon? have a raffle. For those of you who RSVP'd, your name has been entered into a raffle to win tickets to Salmon Fest next year. <laughs> Can't wait. <laughs> we're going to open those. We're going to roll the numbers and see who wins this hour. Pretty excited. All right, so we're moving on to another awesome salmon champion. We're going to hear from Evan Anderson from the Alaska Center, who's going to make sure that you have the tools to make sure salmon counts at the ballot box this year. This year voting is a little more tricky, and we want to make sure everyone stays safe and still gets their voices heard in the ballots. So we're going to roll Evan. I'm Evan, Director of Civic Engagement with the Alaska Center Education Fund. It's an honor to celebrate Salmon Fest in our living rooms with all of you. I'm calling in from unceded Denina land near Tagaycock. In a typical election year, my work focuses on in-person engagement, high quality, nonpartisan voter information at community events, most memorably at Salmon Fest, but also deep canvassing in our communities and throwing parties at the ballot box. This year to keep everyone safe, we have thrown the best practices of community engagement out the window in favor of CDC guidelines and an overabundance of caution. 
We're meeting Alaskans on their favorite platforms, reminding them about elections and their consequences and getting out the vote in more ways than ever. Personally, I'm grateful for childhood memories of stepping into the voting booth with my parents. It's hard to break with long-standing traditions and not gather in person, but just like we're celebrating Salmon Fest at home, voting at home is the best choice for all Alaskans this year. We acknowledge that for too long in Alaska and throughout the country, the ballot has been inaccessible to too many communities. Exclusions on a basis of gender, race, cultural background, education, and income. The very same communities most vulnerable to this health crisis. A core principle of our work prioritizes the trust and express support of community partners as the first step towards meaningful community engagement. This year, our community feels united in protecting all Alaskans' right to vote while protecting all Alaskans' ability to remain safe and healthy during an ongoing pandemic. Vote at home, along with secure and safe in-person voting options in all communities, is the solution, and we need your help to do it safely. Today, I ask all of you, take two minutes online to sign up and receive your absentee ballot. Break with tradition or start a new one if necessary, if it means keeping your neighbors and poll workers safe. Return your ballots in the mail by August 18th for the primary and November 3rd for the general election. More info at akcenteredfund.org. Happy Salmon Fest! Peace, y'all. This is Chloe from Rising Appalachia. Uh, here to stand in solidarity with the efforts being taken to keep the pebble mine out of beautiful Alaska. We had the opportunity to perform at Salmon Fest a few years back and it was such an honor and a treat to be in that um, pristine and incredible part of the world. So thank you for all the work that you all are doing and if you don't uh, know about the pebble mine, please look it up and follow some of these calls to action. I'm going to play you a song called River Mouth that I wrote at the mouth of the Kalamath River uh, probably about five years ago. Enjoy.
Hey, salmon festers, how's it going? Are you festering? This is Steve Poltz checking in with you during these COVID drenched days. Here I am hoping that the Bristol Bay remains pristine, lovely, fishable salmon for all. And I love my friends in Alaska. Here's a song for you that I wrote one day. Muffins in the toaster. I got my raspberry jam. Grandpa was a sailor And he came into this land And he was looking for gold A pretty hand to hold Or some cards to fold At least that's what I've been told Silver lining Silver Turn on my TV They got talking heads in space They used to be so easy To have a little old faith I used to rely on luck Turn an honest buck I didn't feel so stuck I didn't limp around like John Crow to have hope Now we got soap on a rope we Used to have dreams Now we got overpaid baseball teams We got the grocery baggers graffiti taggers golf ball shaggers Go, go team, go Silver lining, silver lining, where'd you go? Landlord knocks upon my door And she's got that payday face I swear to God she should be paying me To live inside this place It's filled with sharks and fins With double chins You say thick in your skin, child If you want to win myself some herbal tea cause it's healthier they say healthier ain't half as fun I'll take a cold beer in a day I used to have dysfunctional fun in the cancerous sun with my codependent hun eating greasy greasy hot dogs on a buttered up bun Silver lining, silver lining, where'd you go? Come on, 
That's the best version I've ever done of that song in my life. I don't even know if I ever am gonna play that song again. That's its last performance because it'll never be that good. Thank you, Salmon Fest. Thank you for having me. This was so much fun. I love you guys forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. Amen. I am your best friend for the rest of our lives. Well, some of you may wonder where the term from the sublime to the ridiculous comes from. I think that might be it. We're very lucky to have uh, Chloe from Rising Appalachia. That was a wonderful, heartfelt, beautiful song. And every time I hear that band, um, I get the shivers. So thank you, Chloe, for sending that in. That was great. And thank you, Steve, so very much. Um, you've been a Salmon Fest favorite for years. We can't get enough of you. And I, I re I'm digressing, and I apologize, but I remember working with Mavis out in the arena there, laying down, uh, putting people around in the pattern for the aerial, and Steve's on the adjacent stage, and it was the most entertaining half hour, I think I remember, because he's such an entertaining guy. So thank you. Uh, it also shows that each of us are dealing with this... Uh, self-isolation business differently, I think. So there's many strategies to get through this time. So, but anyway, so that's great. I appreciate them. Um, but Satchel, should, should we share a little bit of information about the secret project? The secret project, yeah. So if you can't get enough of Dave and I hosting, <laughs> we've been scheming up another project that this time will not be live. We're working on Salmon Fest Radio. It's a podcast that is very similar to our event today. It's going to combine salmon champions from around our state with Salmon Fest artists. And this time the music will come from the stages of Salmon Fest recorded in 2019. And we'll even have more backstage interviews with bands so you can really understand the full spirit of what Salmon Fest has to offer. So that's coming to the airwaves pretty soon. We don't have a firm date, but if you want to make sure that you know when it's coming out, make sure you follow Inlet Keeper Instagram and Facebook. We'll be announcing the podcast real soon. Yep. Very good. I'm all in. That sounds like an exciting project. I can't wait to share that with the world. But we've got a couple bands left to get to before yep. We're Portugal. Gonna hear the man. man, yeah. We're going to hear from an Alaskan band that a lot of you folks will know. It's our Blackwater Railroad Company. They're from Seward, Alaska, and their country bluegrass always gets people moving. And I'd like to remind folks that if you've been on your couch this whole evening, why don't you get up and have a little boogie about it? I was lucky enough to boogie to the KP Brass Band earlier this hour, and it felt really good. I think a lot of us are craving and needing that body movement from dance and live music. So if you haven't done it yet, catch it in the last few sets of our show. Blackwater Railroad will be up and then we're going to hear from the furthest artists we are featuring tonight, all the way from Australia, the Hussy Hicks. They've been coming to our stages for the last few years, I want to say. 
And that just like the Indigo Girls, they provide so much fire and heart and um, really speak to what we're trying to do, which is use music to motivate people to protect what we love. So. Yeah, and maybe people, while we're, this set is playing, just to give us a feel for where you are, if you could just type in the chat where you are, and we'll get a feeling for where in Alaska we're being represented, but also all over the U.S. and the world. So please do that, and please sit back and enjoy this next set. Or boogie. Or boogie. Don't sit back. Don't sit back. Hello everyone, we're Blackwater Railroad. We are excited to be a part of Salmon Fest, the virtual version, and uh, we're gonna start it off with Alaska song. Listen, baby, now what I'm saying I may have finally went too far Cause I'm held up here in Alaska Tax me says it's gonna take my car for the resurrection and 925 is my word and I wish I was heading in a different direction I keep stopping darling that's what hurts Thanks very much, everybody. I um, just want to take a moment to say that we are standing with Alaska today. We're standing for uh, um, Alaska's fisheries, and uh, we want to say no to the pebble mine. We hope that you contact your federal representatives and let them know that you do not want this mine to go and happen in this state. And um, we are very, very happy to be a part of Salmon Fest year in and year out. And uh, we'd like to thank Jim and David 
and all the people who have put this beautiful festival on and uh, continue to fight for what's right here in Alaska. Hey everyone, I'm Jules. I'm Lisa and uh, we're a band from Australia called Hussy Hicks. We've been lucky enough over the last few years to make a couple of trips to, uh, to Alaska after falling in love with the area at Salmon Fest. And we really, really hope to get back there and we hope that it's pristine and beautiful and magical as it, as it is now. And as Australians, we, um, we understand fighting against uh, stupid and nonsensical uh, things that are being rushed through. Yeah, profit over people and uh, over our environment. Um, but we also know uh, from experience that uh, these things can be won and um, talk to as many people as possible, um, you know, share your passion and your information and um, yeah, it, it yeah, can be true. won. Stay together, stay hopeful and stay strong and we're going to play a song that's um, all about being together and uh, and it's it's one that's really full of hope. So we thought it would be appropriate. It's called Gather Up The People. And we hope to see you all soon. Fingers crossed. World is turning on its head, and I'm all shook up, like I'm falling. videoing in from Kanaknak Beach in Dillingham um, on the shores of Bristol Bay. We are wrapping up an amazing salmon season. Over 50 million salmon have returned to our rivers this year.
the salmon returning to their streams in which they were born, um, and our people welcoming, welcoming them as we have for thousands of years. I just want to say thank you so much to all of you tuning in to find out how you can help protect Bristol Bay. It's a critical time we're facing right now. Uh, for those of you that aren't familiar with Bristol Bay, um, you know, we're home to the last great sockeye salmon fishery left on the planet. The Yupik Dena'ina and Alutik indigenous people have thrived here for thousands of years. And that's really what we're trying to protect. We're doing everything we can to protect our way of life, to ensure that our future generations can continue to be Yupik, Dena'ina, and Alutik people for generations to come. Pebble is the biggest threat that our people face. Um, without our clean water, without our lands, our people will cease to exist. And so we are just so thankful that we've been joined by so many of you in our fight to protect the national treasure that is our home. Um, Things are looking tough right now. We're, you know, facing the corruption of a federal administration, a state government that is aligning itself with the, the mining company, company, the Pebble Limited Partnership. But, you know, our, our message is we've been in this for years, decades, and we have no choice but to continue to fight. And we are very confident that the truth, facts, and what is right will prevail in this fight. It's not the time to give up. It's not the time to take our foot off the gas. It's our time to double down and protect what has kept our people thriving here for generations and what will continue to feed the world for generations to come if we protect it. So with that, I would just say, please do everything you can to help hold the government accountable. The EPA not only has the authority to protect Bristol Bay and veto this project, it has the responsibility to the American people to do so. In closing, I just want to say Khoyana so much to all of you for your dedication to protecting Bristol Bay. There is no way that we could do this alone. We need you. We need our allies. We are so thankful for you. And we will not rest until our home is protected. And we know you won't either. So thank you so much again. Um, have a great digital salmon fest. And we look forward to defeating this project with you. Ladies and gentlemen, that was Alana Hurley, one of my heroes on the planet. Alana Hurley of United Tribes of Bristol Bay, an articulate voice letting us all know what's important and why that connection, that deep connection to Bristol Bay is important. So we're very proud to have uh, the United Tribes of Bristol Bay as a co-presenter today, and we're looking forward to sharing some of the uh, gifts that you've sent us their way to support an organization that represents 15, 15 tribes yeah. across the region that are committed to stopping the pebble mine. So thank you, Alana, so much for sending in the video. Um, you can tell it's from the heart, so appreciate that. What should we do now? I think Caitlin's done with her painting, so we should go check out uh, she's what done? she's got. Caitlin, can you introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Caitlin Vodla, and I'm the regional director for Coconut Keeper up at she our might, is she on mute? Caitlin, you might be on mute. We can't hear you. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> and I feel honored to get to share my creativity with you and honored to be a part of Salmon Fest this year. Listening to Melanie Brown and Alana Hurley uh, while listening also to the music makes this painting behind me full of both joy and deep anger and deep feelings about why we've had to continue to fight this project for so long. And it's a long fight and we're all in it together. I still have a few details to finish up on this bear uh, who is being fed by a salmon who's giving himself to the bear. Salmon feed our world here in Alaska, and so we, we can't let a, a stupid project happen in, right in our backyard and to, to our friends and family in Bristol Bay. So please bid on this artwork. It's going to be up for another two days, and you, um, we would love your support, and I've really enjoyed painting it 
there will be some more photos so you can see some of the details. It's, uh, it's full of color and energy, and I hope you will enjoy it. Thanks. That's terrific. Thank you, Caitlin. What a wonderful piece of art. We're going to have that thing uh, for sale for a couple more days there. We're auctioning that beautiful piece. And um, the, again, all those contributions will go to fight the fight. So thank you for that wonderful contribution to today. And I'm not sure if Caitlin mentioned it, but you have until Tuesday at noon to bid on that piece. So awesome. get in there. Now... It's time to uh, complete the cycle here with regard to the raffle. If you registered online to attend today, your name was put into a giant electric electron bucket that swirls around the internet through a random number generator. And we have two prizes, officially sealed envelopes with prize winners selected from that list of, of those of you that got into this program that way. I want to open the gift package from our friends at Salmon Sisters, based here in Homer, the Lakitis women. Uh, what a brand, and what a team. Uh, I'm going to open this up, and uh, I know you're all in pins and needles, each and every one of you. Get off the pins and needles. And the winner is La La Land. Oh, no. <laughs> Too soon? Yeah. Justin Ruffridge from beautiful downtown Soldatna, Alaska. Justin, you're the winner of the very exclusive Sam and Sister gift pack. All right. And I think moving on to the moment we've been waiting for, inside this envelope is the winner of tickets to next year's Salmon Fest. I believe that is two tickets to Salmon Fest 2021, the 10th anniversary of Salmon Fest in Ninilchik. 10th and a half, 10th? Yeah, we might have. We are the 10th with an asterisk, so <laughs> it'll be the 10th. Very much looking forward to Salmon Fest next year. All right, we have Kari Thurman of Homer, Alaska. Wow! Woo! No, the fix was not in, but that's very exciting, isn't it? That very exciting. Current. We don't even need to put it in the mail. No, we can we can walk them right over there. That's great. Congratulations and uh, best wishes for next time for all of you that didn't win. But uh, it's a great way to participate in this event. We're getting close to the end of our time together. In fact, we've dribbled over a little past the, our ending time. I hope nobody had to sign off because. Uh, We've got a very special uh, guest coming up, do we not? We do, yeah. Um, so this effort to put SamFest streaming for Bristol Bay together has been super collaborative with so many key players, but of course we have to mention the SamFest organizing team. We all work together, but uh, we're going to hear directly from SamFest organizers themselves now. Um, David Stearns, he's the assistant director of SamFest, and uh, SamFest is here to send you Warm wishes and uh, yeah, here with you all the way. Here we go. Hello, Salmon Fest. My name is David Stearns, Assistant Festival Director. And while we are deeply disappointed that we aren't together celebrating fish, love, and music this weekend, we are delighted to bring you this short, sweet, but also very timely virtual event. First, we want to thank all the people who worked tirelessly putting this together. There are too many to mention, but we want to give special thanks to Dave and Tom Applin. Satchel Pandolfino, Zoe Kramer, and Bridget Marriott of Cook Inlet Keeper, our producer Scott Jensen, all of the performers, the speakers, and last but certainly not least, all of you, our extended Salmon family, who have joined for this important celebration. As you know, Salmon Fest is more than a music festival. It exists to celebrate Alaska's salmon culture and galvanize a community of activists dedicated to preserving Bristol Bay. Salmon is the great unifier that binds all Alaskans together. The iconic species transcends political beliefs, socioeconomics, and cultural differences unlike anything else. It has been central to the economy of Alaska, not only on our dinner tables, but to the people who have called and continue to call Alaska home. Salmon is life, sustaining ecosystems, wildlife, and it is central to our identity and the lore of our state. We can't begin to tell you how much we miss having all of you with us in Nilchik this weekend for the 10th anniversary, but we want you to know that we remain as committed to the cause as ever 
Every dollar from this event will be given to the ongoing effort to protect and sustain salmon and the habitat in which they thrive. Thank you for tuning in this afternoon and for the, your support over the last decade. We have some big announcements coming in the spring of 2021, and we promise next summer, Salmon Fest's 10th anniversary will be the best one yet. And our final music act this evening is a band with deep ties to the state of Alaska and an equally deep commitment to social and environmental justice. We are incredibly thankful to them for lending their voice to our cause, and we have every intention of doing everything we can to get them live on the Salmon Fest stage in the near future. So ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, Portugal the Man. Came today, we found a sea of air. But when we went back, nothing was there. The tower so tall, it nearly left the ground. But still, when we looked, nothing was found. Folks, we have to say goodbye now. 
We are so grateful for each and every one of you for putting your energy into this event and joining us even over the virtual web tonight. I think we all really needed um, to come together even in this way. I know that Salmon Fest is really one of my favorite events of the year because it combines my two favorite cultures and that live music culture and a, such creative expression when people coming together in such joyous ways with a community committed to embedding our home and the things that we love and in this case something that I love so dearly which is salmon, Alaskan salmon. So I cannot wait to see you guys in person next year Sam Fest 2021. Nor can I. Yeah. This is, to me, this is a remarkable uh, event, and there's so many people to thank. Our friends, uh, the advocates, uh, the salmon champions that came together, all of the artists that have submitted. David Stearns did a wonderful job. You all that tuned in and are sticking with this fight. This is our chance to claim the future for Bristol Bay that we all want, the future we see together, a future that's sustainable, and celebrates a system that keeps just keep chugging along, a system that allows us to live off the surplus and still remain intact. Where else are, is that on earth? That isn't very many no. places anymore. So thanks for your commitment, your tuning in, and do what you can to keep Bristol Bay, Bristol Bay. Please make your voice heard. Goodbye.